All right, let's jump right in. Today, we are going to tackle one of the biggest, most common headaches in the entire home lab world, network naming. Seriously, if you've ever fired up a Proxmox server or tried to wrangle a few Docker containers, you know exactly the kind of pain I'm talking about. But don't you worry, we're going to lay out a super clear blueprint to get this sorted out for good. Does this sound familiar? I bet it does. You start a cool new side project. Maybe it's a media server or a new service running in an LXC container. And before you know it, you are drowning in a sea of IP addresses and those infuriating browser security warnings. What started out as something fun has somehow morphed into a total networking nightmare. And that right there is the heart of the home lab headache. You've got all these awesome services running locally, right? But actually getting to them is just a complete mess. You want that clean, secure access when you're out of the house, but you also want that super fast, direct connection when you're sitting on your own couch. And you want it all without those constant, your connection is not private errors. So what is the answer to all this naming nonsense? How do you finally untangle that web? Well, it turns out the community has pretty much landed on a really elegant solution that, once you get it, just makes everything click into place. And that solution is called Split DNS. You might also hear it called Split Horizon DNS. Now, I know the name sounds a little bit complicated, maybe a bit technical, but the core idea is actually incredibly simple and honestly, really powerful. So let's break it down. Here's the magic trick. Think of your DNS server like it has two different address books for the exact same name. It's smart enough to know where you're asking from. Are you inside the house or are you out in the wider world? And based on that location, it just hands you a different address. And this slide lays it out perfectly. When you're at a coffee shop and you type in jellyfinyourdomain.com, your DNS points you to your home's public IP address. Simple enough. But when you're sitting on your couch connected to your home Wi-Fi, that exact same domain name points you straight to the local IP of your server, like 192.168.1.50. It's one name, but two totally different optimized paths. So why go through this setup? Well, the payoff is absolutely huge. First, and this is the big one for me, you get to kill those constant SSL warnings forever. You just use one proper certificate for everything. You also get to use one clean domain name, whether you're at home or away, no more remembering different addresses. Plus, you get to avoid a tricky network issue called hairpin NAT, which basically means your local connections will be way faster. It's just a cleaner, smarter setup that actually works. Now, when it comes to actually implementing this, you'll find the community is kind of divided. It really boils down to two main philosophies. You can see two main camps on the best way to get this done. Okay, let's look at the breakdown. Over in camp A, you're using a local only domain, something like .home, .lan, and then you manually create exceptions for the few services you want public. It keeps things separate, sure, but certificate management becomes a total nightmare. Now look at camp B, which is where a lot of people are heading these days. You use one single real domain for everything. And here's the key. Look how the pros of Camp B directly solve the cons of Camp A. A single domain means you can use a wildcard SSL certificate, and the entire certificate headache just vanishes. The logic is so much cleaner, even if it takes a little more thought to set up initially. Oh, and just a quick pro tip from the community here. If you do decide to go with a local domain, the modern best practice is to use .home .arpa instead of the old .lan. Why? Because .home .arpa is officially reserved for this exact purpose, which means you're way less likely to run into weird network conflicts down the road. But here's the thing. Awesome DNS is only half of the equation. To make this whole setup work seamlessly and, more importantly, securely, you need another critical piece of the puzzle, a reverse proxy. This is the component that's going to manage all our traffic and automate our SSL certificates. And this is precisely why tools like Traffic and Caddy are so incredibly popular in the home lab world. They are built for dynamic setups like ours. But their absolute killer feature is how they can automatically handle SSL certificates using something called a DNS01 challenge. The bottom line for you, you don't have to open port 80 on your firewall to the internet. And that, my friends, is a massive security win. Caddy is another fantastic choice, and a lot of people love it because it's known for being super simple to configure. Okay, so we've covered the problem, we've gone over the core concept of split DNS, and we've talked about the essential tools. Now let's put it all together. Let's build a clear, actionable blueprint that really represents the community's consensus on the best way forward. 
And here it is, your five steps to networking sanity. Step one, it all starts with getting a real domain name. Step two, you set up your internal DNS server, like Technedium or Unbound, to handle the split horizon magic. Step three, that single domain lets you easily generate one wildcard SSL certificate to secure literally everything. Step four, your reverse proxy, like Trafic or Caddy, takes that certificate and manages all your traffic. And finally, step five, you just map all your services with static IPs internally. You see, each step builds on the last, giving you a setup that's consistent, secure, and wonderfully simple. Simple. And that really brings us to the most important point of all. This whole thing was never just about a clever technical fix. It's about creating a predictable, stable environment for your projects. It's about following the ultimate home lab rule. Spend more of your time building cool things and way less time debugging weird network problems. It really is worth its weight in rack-mounted gold. So the only question left is, what are you going to build next?